Hi everyone. So far, all the code we've written has been pretty boring. Boring in a sense that there's really no control or order to how it runs. You have a line of code, it just executes. You have many lines of code, it just executes in the order it is currently displayed in the code editor. That is not how real applications work, and that's definitely not how the applications we will be writing will work either. So the first step in trying to bring some control, trying to bring some order to the code that we're writing, is by learning about if and else statements. And in this video, we're going to learn all about them and all the things you can do that help bring some sanity to the code that we've been writing so far. Let's get started. So an if and else statement is pretty simple. It allows you to run some code based on whether a condition is true or false. Now, I know this makes absolutely no sense, but just bear with me here. We'll go through some of this theory and then write some code and actually start looking at how what I've written here makes sense in the JavaScript world. So think of an if statement as broken up into two halves. You have the half that is run when the condition or the test we're checking for evaluates it true. Then you have the half that runs when the test that we're evaluating for ends up returning false. And the way you do all of this is pretty simple. You write the letters if for if, and in parentheses, you specify the test you want to check against. And this test could be anything. It could be a single value. It could be a complex expression. It could be a function that returns other values. As long as whatever is inside parentheses ultimately ends up resulting in a value that is true or false, it's fair game. Anything goes. And we'll look at some examples of that later. And then immediately afterwards, you create a block. The first block is whatever happens when the evaluation is true. And the second block, which we denote with an else in this case, the else keyword, is what runs when the expression that we are evaluating for ends up becoming false. Now, that's a very simplistic view of how things go. But in reality, a lot of what you'll be doing with if and else statements is actually doing a comparison. You know, is this item bigger than the other item? Is this name equivalent to the username that we're storing somewhere in our code? And that requires the addition of one extra information, and that is known as the operator. The operator is what allows you to basically provide a comparison between two or more items, as you will see shortly. And I'm going to warn you, the next slide is going to be a little bit on the more bizarre end, mostly because everything we've looked at so far in JavaScript has been mostly human readable English. There's been some brackets, some weird quotation marks and parentheses. But outside of that, it was like a kind of like a poorly written novel from like the 1500s or something. It just wasn't the most readable thing, but you could sort of make out what's going on, but not when it comes to the operators. These are things you have to essentially memorize so that you have an idea of when to use the right one for whatever kind of comparison you are looking at. And let's go through these very quickly. The first one is equals equals. And what this specifies is that if the first expression, which is the item on the left here, it equals the value of the right, impression, right expression, that overall condition, the test, is equivalent to true. Then you have greater than or equal to, greater than, less than or equal to, less than. If you're familiar with your math classes many, many years ago, this is the same as like having a greater than sign with an underline below it to indicate that the value can be greater than or equal to something or less than or equal to something. And the last three are more on the bizarre end side of things. This is stuff that is more domain specific to programming languages. The exclamation mark equals means it is not equal to. So for example, if expression does not equal the second expression, then if that ends up being a valid statement, then the overall expression ends up being true. Ampersand ampersand is basically uh, an evaluation where both expressions evaluate to true. And if they are, then the overall expression is true. And then the two pipe symbols are an either, you know, as an either operator. Basically, if one of these is true, if expression one is true or expression two is true, and you're using the pipe operator, then the overall expression is true because one of them happens to be true. Now, I know that this is very dry and very dull, so let's just skip this over for now and look at the code where we actually get to see more of this in practice where this will make a little bit more sense. And the more practice you get, the better off you'll be in remembering some of these things, especially if it's the first time you're seeing what are known as these operators. So I'm in the code editor right now. And the example I'm going to start with is very, very basic. You know, you just have like a simple HTML page that happens to have two lines, two statements here, document the right line, ABC and document that right line x, y, z. If you've never seen the right line function before, it basically allows you to specify what you want printed on the screen. In this case, just a, b, c, and x, y, z. And then you minimize some other stuff so that we just are focusing on just what we're looking at here. All right, so let's go and write a very simple if statement. I'm gonna say if for if, and in parentheses, I'm gonna specify the test, the test, the condition that is going to evaluate to either true or false. 
So for now, I'm gonna keep it very simple. Let's just say, I'm just gonna put in true. And we know it's gonna evaluate to a, a true value because I'm literally providing true as the input right here. Let's say document.write line. And let's just say, hello. So if I were to you know, see what happens, you notice that you see the ABC you know, printed from the earlier statement. And since this if statement is true, we also print out the words hello, and then the last statement ends up executing. Pretty simple. Now, if we were to change false, for example, notice what happens. You no longer see the word hello being printed out because, well, the statement evaluates to false, and this line is only going to execute if this condition ends up becoming true. So this is where the else statement comes in. I'm going to say, you know, this is not true. The test fails. So let's go ahead and let's write something in here that says the equivalent of that. Write line, test failed. And once I've done that, notice that it says, you know, the normal, the expected A, B, C, and X, Y, Z at the ends. And in the middle, we have test fail because our test for the if statement ended up returning a value of false. Now, the thing is, you can put anything here as the expression. And in real life, there's, it's very rare you're actually gonna be providing something as simple as the word false. You'll be providing something more of like a variable. In this case, I'm gonna say var temperature equals 32. And with this value, what I'm gonna do is instead of having just a false or a true as a test that I'm providing here, I'm gonna make it a more realistic expression, something that uses the operators we saw in the slides earlier. So I'm gonna say if temperature equals greater than 100. So what I'm saying here is the value of temperature is 32 is greater than 100, in which case, if it is, then it is, it's pretty hot. I'm gonna say it is pretty hot. It's pretty hot. And if that isn't gonna evaluate the trim, I'm gonna say, it's gonna be cold. In this case, the value is pretty simple. The value of temperature is 32, and 32 is not greater than 100, so this evaluation, our test right here, ends up becoming false. So the code under else block ends up running. It's gonna be cold. If I put temperature, if I, let's say I change the value for temperature from 100 to, let's say 105 degrees, you know, really, really hot. You go, yeah, the appropriate line of code executes in this case. And this is document the right line, it's pretty hot. That's what you see printed out on the screen as well. So that is very simply a condition that you can specify where you just have one expression, operator, another expression. But the thing is, you can actually go even more complex. The thing that's really hard to often just wrap our minds around is that everything is specified inside the if statement. It doesn't matter how complex or how simple what is in there ends up being. As long as it evaluates it true or false, you're totally fine, which basically means you can actually daisy chain conditions together. And that's kind of crazy, but you will end up doing this more frequently than you think you would. Let's say that var temperature 105, var rain equals true. So what I'm gonna do here is saying if temperature is greater than 100, and let's say rain equals equals false, then we could have another evaluation where it says it's, you know, which it's gonna go, which it's gonna be. It's gonna be hot or it's gonna be cold. In this case, it's gonna be pretty cold because the temperature over a greater than 100, that evaluates to true. Rain equals equals false, that actually evaluates to false because the value of rain is actually true here. And what this particular operator, the double ampersands do is they say, if the left-hand side of what I'm comparing with is equal to the right-hand side of what I'm comparing with, in that when I say equal, I mean they're both equivalent to true, then I'm gonna say this overall expression is true. And that case, it is actually not gonna work out because it's pretty hot only works if both are true. That means I need to basically say it's brain status right now is false. And when I do that, you see it's pretty hot getting displayed on the screen as well. Now, what I'm gonna gloss over in this video because it's far more complex than what can be covered in the few minutes we have together is that this whole set of, you know, this whole expression falls under this umbrella called Boolean logic. It's basically where you can chain together statements and come up with very complex structures that ultimately result in one of two values, true or false. There's a whole field of study on there. And the best way to see some of these things is in future examples when you're working together on them where you'll see simple examples and more complex examples that kind of get you the rhythm of how to think about at the ampersands equals equals greater than and all these things where you can quickly look at something and go, okay, this is gonna be true, or it's gonna be false. And you know, I know I hate to say this, but practice one of the only few ways this whole thing makes sense because it is very bizarre, especially if it's the first time you're actually looking at these comparison operators and looking at how if and else statements actually actually work. So what I'm gonna do now is 
I think that's a good start for now. You know, if and else statements are one of the basic structures you're going to be using to help bring some logic into your code. So your code doesn't just blindly execute everything in sight, but actually is a little bit more intelligent, a little bit smart about what exactly happens. There are many more structures that we're going to be looking at in the future, and many more structures you won't be looking at explicitly as part of individual videos, but it'll be part of examples in larger videos. So with that, stay tuned for it. And if you have any more questions, by all means, go to the forums, post at forum at crib.com. You can find this tutorial and many others on crib.com itself. So if you prefer reading an article as opposed to watching a video on it, you can totally do that. And you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Find me, you know, I'm all over the place pretty much. And of course, I also have a book for JavaScript beginners. If you want to learn JavaScript in a, in a more friendly, more hand-holding way, then JS 101, JavaScript for Beginners. It's a great book, you know, personally biased because I wrote it. And you can find it on Amazon in paperback and Kindle editions. And with that, I'll see you guys in our next video.